Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the pulmonary hypertension. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope you enjoy this video. So let's start. So what is pulmonary hypertension? Pulmonary hypertension is defined as a mean arterial pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury as confirmed on right heart catheterization. Traditionally, the pulmonary arterial systolic pressure has been estimated on echo by utilizing the simplified Bernoulli equation from the peak tricuspid regurgitant velocity and adding this to an estimate of right atrial pressure. Previous studies have demonstrated a correlation between this estimate of pulmonary arterial systolic pressure and that obtained from invasive measurement across a cohort of patients. However, for an individual patient, significant overestimation and underestimation can occur and the levels of agreement between the two is poor. Recent guidance has suggested that echocardiographic assessment of pulmonary hypertension should be limited to determine the probability of pulmonary hypertension being present rather than estimating the pulmonary artery pressure. In those patients in whom the presence of pulmonary hypertension requires confirmation, this should be done with right heart catheterization when indicated. So, what is the definition of pulmonary hypertension? Pulmonary hypertension is presently defined as an increase in mean pulmonary arterial pressure to 25 millimeters of mercury at rest as assessed by right heart catheterization. The clinical significance of a mean pulmonary arterial pressure between 21 and 24 millimeters of mercury is unclear. It can complicate many cardiovascular, respiratory and connective tissue diseases. If pulmonary hypertension is untreated, morbidity and mortality levels are high and therefore an accurate and prompt diagnosis is crucial. The diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension requires a clinical suspicion based on symptoms, physical examination, and review of a comprehensive set of investigations. Echocardiography is a key imaging modality in the assessment of patients with suspected or known pulmonary hypertension. So, how can we classify pulmonary hypertension? The classification of pulmonary hypertension categorizes different clinical conditions into five groups. This categorization is important for two reasons. First, the most common form of pulmonary hypertension encountered in any echocardiography department will be secondary to left heart disease. And second, the interpretation of supportive measurements for classification of patients with intermediate probability of pulmonary hypertension must be taken in the context of the possible underlying cause as this might be more likely in cases with precapillary pulmonary hypertension. As I said before, pulmonary hypertension can be classified into five groups. The first group are those patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension and a normal mean pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. Some of the causes for this type of hypertension could be idiopathic, hereditary, drug or toxin induced, 
shunts related to congenital heart disease, connective tissue disease, portal hypertension, or chronic hemolytic anemia. The second group are those patients with pulmonary hypertension secondary to left heart disease. These patients have increased mean pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. Some of the causes for this group of hypertension could be valvular heart disease, systolic dysfunction, diastolic dysfunction, pericardial disease, congenital or acquired left heart inflow or outflow tract obstruction, and congenital cardiomyopathies. The third group are those patients with pulmonary hypertension secondary to lung disease with a normal mean pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. Some of the causes could be chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, severe asthma, interstitial lung disease, sleep apnea, long-term exposure to high altitude, and congenital lung abnormalities. In the fourth group are those patients with chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and a normal mean pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. Some of the causes could be chronic pulmonary embolism. And in the last group, we can find those patients with pulmonary hypertension with unclear or multifactorial mechanisms. In this group of patients, the mean pulmonary arterial wedge pressure could be normal or increased, and one of the causes could be systemic diseases, sarcoidosis, vasculitis, hematological malignancies, chronic renal failure, metabolic disorders, or lung tumors. Now, how can we assess pulmonary hypertension with echocardiography? The traditional echocardiographic approach to estimating pulmonary artery systolic pressure uses a derivation of right ventricular pressure from the tricuspid regurgitation velocity, added to a qualitative assessment of right atrial pressure. Previous studies have demonstrated good correlation across patient populations, but only moderate precision of absolute pulmonary artery systolic pressure values calculated from tricuspid regurgitation velocity. This is important as in an individual patient, significant under and overestimation can occur, leading to misdiagnosis and inappropriate treatment. When screening patients with suspected pulmonary hypertension, Information obtained from echocardiography can only grade the probability of pulmonary hypertension being present rather than provide a definitive diagnosis. Therefore, when assessing the probability of pulmonary hypertension, the measurement of tricuspid regurgitation velocity should be used in conjunction with other echocardiographic markers of pulmonary hypertension. The invasive measurement of pulmonary artery pressure during right heart cardiac catheterization is required to confirm or refute a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. So, the first step in assessing the echocardiographic probability of pulmonary hypertension being present is to measure the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity. If this is a good quality signal and is greater than 3.4 meters per second, there is a high probability of pulmonary hypertension being present. If the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity 
is below 3.4 meters per second, the probability of pulmonary hypertension is assessed in combination with other echocardiographic markers. So the first and most important step in the assessment of pulmonary hypertension is measuring the tricuspid regurgitation velocity. If the tricuspid regurgitation velocity is less than 2.8 meters per second or not measurable and without any other markers of pulmonary hypertension, this patient has a low probability of having pulmonary hypertension. However, if the tricuspid regurgitation velocity is less than 2.8 meters per second or not measurable, and you do have at least two other markers of pulmonary hypertension, this patient has an intermediate probability of having pulmonary hypertension. If the tricuspid regurgitation velocity is higher between 2.8 and 3.4 meters per second, the probability of having pulmonary hypertension is significant. Either you have at least two echo markers of pulmonary hypertension or not, the probability of having pulmonary hypertension can go from intermediate to high. And if you have a tricuspid regurgitation velocity more than 3.4 meters per second, you don't need to correlate this with any other markers of pulmonary hypertension because for this patient, the probability of having pulmonary hypertension is already high. Here you can see other echocardiographic markers used to help grade the probability of pulmonary hypertension. At least two markers of these three different categories should be present to alter the level of echocardiographic probability of pulmonary hypertension. The first category are any changes to the ventricles. The second category are any changes to the pulmonary artery. And the third category is any changes to the inferior vena cava and right atrium. Minimal requirements are needed to assess the probability of pulmonary hypertension. The first marker we need to measure is the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity. Peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity is measured by continuous wave Doppler across the tricuspid valve. Multiple views may need to be taken to obtain the optimal window. When measuring the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity, ensure the continuous wave Doppler to flow angle is correctly aligned. Eccentric jets can lead to incomplete Doppler envelopes and underestimation of tricuspid regurgitation velocity. Velocity can be underestimated in severe or free tricuspid regurgitation and should be stated in the report. Number two is the measurement of the pulmonary artery diameter. The pulmonary artery dilates in response to volume and pressure overload. A diameter of more than 25 millimeters is considered abnormal. Number three is the measurement of the right ventricular outflow tract acceleration time. Acceleration time of less than 105 milliseconds is considered a marker of raised pulmonary artery pressure. Number four is the measurement of the early diastolic pulmonary regurgitation velocity. This may have additional value when tricuspid regurgitation velocity cannot be used or relied upon. An early pulmonary regurgitation velocity more than 2.2 meters per second 
is considered a marker of raised mean pulmonary artery pressure. Number five is the visualization of the pulmonary systolic notch. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary arterial stiffness can cause a reflection of wave which returns towards the right ventricle during systole. This causes notching of the Doppler profile. The presence of a pulmonary systolic notch is considered a marker of raised pulmonary artery pressure. Number six, the eccentricity index. Right ventricular pressure and volume overload can lead to an abnormal shape and function of the interventricular septum resulting in flattening. Left ventricular eccentricity index more than 1.1 is considered abnormal. Number seven is the right ventricular left ventricular basal diameter ratio. A ratio of more than one measured at end of diastole suggests right ventricular dilatation. Number eight is the measurement of the right atrial area. A right atrial area more than 18 centimeters square is considered abnormal. Number nine is the assessment of the inferior vena cava diameter. Assess size and percentage reduction in diameter with sniffing or quiet inspiration. An inferior vena cava diameter more than 21 millimeters with decreased inspiratory collapse, less than 50% with a sniff or less than 20% with quiet respiration is considered abnormal. As we could see, Echocardiography also provides information about etiology and prognosis in patients with pulmonary hypertension. Patients with established pulmonary hypertension or high probability for pulmonary hypertension should have a full assessment to exclude left-sided heart disease or intracardiac shunts as the cause of pulmonary hypertension. Right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction are considered poor prognostic markers in patients with pulmonary hypertension. The following additional measurements can be used to assess patients with pulmonary hypertension. Pericardial effusion, right ventricular dimensions, fractional area change, TAPSI, Myocardial Performance Index, Right Ventricular Pulse Tissue Doppler S-Wave Velocity, and Pulmonary Arterial End Diastolic Pressure. Some of the features which may suggest left heart disease as the cause of pulmonary hypertension are in the group of pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease, we can find left ventricular systolic dysfunction, left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, valvular heart disease, and congenital heart disease. To confirm this, we can take into consideration these echocardiographic features suggesting left heart disease may be the cause of pulmonary hypertension. A dilated left ventricle with reduced ejection fraction, an E prime ratio more than 10, left atrial dilatation and left ventricular hypertrophy, more than mild valvular disease or the presence of an intra and extra cardiac defects. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to share this video with your colleagues. Bye!